here we are gearing up for another Starship boom. SpaceX recently unveiled the launch date for Starship Flight 3, and it's coming up fast. Just next month in February, SpaceX Vice President of Customer Operations and Integration Jessica Jensen gave this updated timeline for Starship's next test flight at a press conference on Tuesday with NASA, where the agency delayed the schedule for its moon missions Artemis 2 and 3. Jensen shared that Starship hopes to be ready to test Starship once more by the end of January and to receive the necessary license from federal authorities to do so by the end of February. Now we have static fired the booster already, we have static fired the ship. At this stage, both Flight 3 vehicles concluded their test campaigns and were returned to the production site for last minute modifications and thorough checks before their scheduled flight. The final checks encompass a spectrum from routine avionics and valve operations checks to potential last minute additions or modifications to the booster based on lessons learned from the November 18th, 2023 flight of Ship 25 and Booster 9. SpaceX confirmed that both static fires were successful, highlighting that the second static fire mimicked an actual flight startup. Ultimately, the upcoming flight hinges entirely on the FAA's decision. Part of that is closing out the corrective actions from Flight 2. Um, we're on track for that. We're working closely, so we're expecting that license to come in February. The shift. Um, this will not be the mission that does the on-orbit ship-to-ship propellant transfer. So this is just the next series and our iterations of um, increasing performance and getting to orbit. But there will be, we are working towards a tipping point demonstration, so that might be what you're talking about, where um, the goal is to transfer um, propellant from the header tank into the main tank. So Starship, designed to be reusable and carry up to 100 people into space, stands as a pivotal element in NASA's Artemis program. While intended to facilitate NASA's lunar ambitions, Starship has yet to achieve orbit. Its initial two tests resulted in explosions, with the first occurring minutes after liftoff and the second around 15 minutes into the flight. To prioritize safety, NASA Administrator Bill Nelson announced a delay for Artemis 2 and 3. This delay aims to ensure the safety of all privately developed spacecraft and associated hardware crucial for Artemis, including Starship. Jensen noted that following a February test flight, Starship will undergo several subsequent tests. These include missions to orbit, space system evaluations, and an unmanned lunar landing, essential milestones before NASA can deploy it as intended. She further explained that approximately 10 Starship launches would be necessary to fully fuel an on-orbit tanker. That would be my rough guess right now, but it could be lower depending on how well the first flight tests go, or it could be a little bit higher. Jensen predicts that Starship would land on the moon as soon as 2025. That's also when NASA now plans to send Artemis 2 on a crewed flight around the moon using the agency's Space Launch System rocket and the Orion spacecraft. Originally, that mission was meant to take place in 2024, this year. Now, here's another piece of good news. SpaceX's CEO Elon Musk will also provide a 2024 Starship update next Thursday. We'll keep you posted on any important news from this talk, so stay tuned for our updates. While we anticipate updates from SpaceX's Musk next Thursday, unfortunately, there's less promising news for Astrobotics Peregrine Lander Dreams. It seems the moon's aspirations for this project has come to an end. Early on the 8th of January, Peregrine embarked on its first mission, riding aboard United Launch Alliance's Vulcan Centaur rocket. The launch was successful, but upon separation from the rocket's Centaur upper stage, Peregrine confronted an issue. Regrettably, the robotic lander struggled to properly orient itself for solar panel charging due to a propellant leak, which persists and prevents Peregrine from carrying out its planned mission. Astrobotic wrote on the 9th in an update on X. For NASA, this is a rather disappointing way for the mission to conclude. Peregrine Mission 1 was supposed to be the beginning of the agency's return to lunar exploration. It's fortunate that some payloads can still collect data despite not being on the lunar surface, although their intended studies might not be feasible anymore. Unfortunately, both rovers, one from NASA and one from Mexico, are stranded in space without a reachable landing site. However, this setback doesn't mark the end for NASA's Commercial Lunar Payload Services program. Similar to other commercial initiatives by NASA, this program was designed with multiple providers in mind, ensuring contingency plans in case of such setbacks. The next significant mission, potentially leading the CLIPS success story, is Intuitive Machine's IM-1 mission. 
scheduled for launch no earlier than mid-February. Before Astrobotic's lander encountered issues, these two missions were slated for landing attempts just a day apart, highlighting NASA's consistent commitment to partnering with the commercial industry for its lunar endeavors. Even at the lower Earth orbit, NASA has recently added milestones and funding to agreements with two companies working on commercial space station concepts using money from a third agreement that ended last year. The agency announced on the 5th that it added a combined $99.5 million in funding to existing Space Act agreements with Blue Origin and Voyager Space. The two companies received the original agreements back in December of 2021 as part of NASA's Commercial Low Earth Orbit Destinations, or COLD CLD, program to spur the development of commercial space stations intended to succeed the International Space Station. Blue Origin, which is developing the Orbital Reef Space Station with Sierra Space and other companies, received an increase of $42 million to its original $130 million award. The increase includes additional milestones for subsystem design reviews and technology maturation as well as work on the station's life support systems. Voyager Space, which is partnered with Airbus Defense and Space to develop the Starlab station, received $57.5 million in additional funding on its $160 million award. That'll go towards various development milestones for the station as well as work to upgrade Northrop Grumman's Cygnus cargo spacecraft to enable it to dock directly with the station rather than be birthed to it by a robotic arm. The funding comes primarily from a third cold agreement that NASA awarded to Northrop Grumman. It announced in October that it would no longer pursue its own space station, but instead would work with Voyager Space on Starlab, including providing a version of Cygnus to transport cargo to Starlab. As part of that partnership, Northrop withdrew from its NASA cold agreement. The agency stated in October that it planned to reallocate the $89 million that had not been spent by Northrop on its $125.6 million award to other cold providers. NASA said in that very same announcement that it combined the unused money with other program funding to reach the $99.5 million it added to the Blue Origin and Voyager Space agreements. NASA is also in discussions with Axiom Space, which has a separate contract with NASA to access a docking port on the ISS for commercial modules that will form the basis of a future standalone commercial space station. The agency said it is negotiating additional content for that contract with Axiom, details of which are still being finalized. The agreements with Axiom Space, Blue Origin, and Voyager Space are all part of NASA's strategy to support the development of commercial stations the agency wants to have in operation by late this decade to support a transition from the ISS set for retirement in the year 2030. NASA would then be a customer of those commercial stations along with other space agencies and and companies. The possibility of a gap between the ISS and commercial space stations by the decade's end is a lingering concern. During a NASA advisory committee meeting on November 20th, Phil McAllister, director of the Commercial Spaceflight Division at NASA, addressed this potential issue, highlighting the need for ready-to-launch commercial stations by then or an extension for the ISS. What are your thoughts on this timeline? Do you believe companies can bridge this gap and develop commercial stations in time? Join the conversation and share your perspective in the comments below. Well, folks, that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. And if you want to support our channel even further, you can hop on over to our Patreon through the link in the description below. Sign up and become a patron today to gain access to exclusive content. Sounds exciting, right? In any case, we still appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.